We are continuing our work on the figure here and particularly the face. Last week we talked about the large shapes on the face and particularly the important plane breaks. For instance, the area of the eyes that are tucked away behind the shelf of this brow here and are in shadow. Um, there's also a, the top lip is a plane break. If the light is coming from here, the lip turns away and then that's in shadow. And the same with the sides of the face, which are a different plane than the front of the face. So this week we will take a look at some details of the face features. And for those, we're going to take a look at the eye. We'll also provide some reference material for the ear and the nose. Uh, but for those, and the lips, but for those who are not working on the figure, we will uh, have an image to work on of marbles because there are similarities in the way the eyeball looks to a marble in its uh, spherical shape and also it, the way the light um, hits it because of its transparency and so forth. So. In this particular segment, we'll take a look at the eye, and one of the, there are, of course, a number of uh, important things, um, so we'll just take them one at a time, and the one I want to point out this time is two important things that we often are not, um, is not pointed out to us and we don't realize. One is that the bottom lip, I'm sorry, the bottom uh, eyelid tucks into the upper eyelid. It doesn't meet at right at the same point. And that's an important feature because um, we were all taught, probably, to draw the eye opening as two matching ellipses meeting on the ends. And that is actually more uh, akin to um, a reptilian eye, which closes like this and the uh, lids meet in the middle. Um, whereas the human eye um, closes, the, the upper lid slightly overlaps the lower lid and comes down like this and you see most of the upper lid when it closes. So it seems like a detail and no one would probably look at a drawing and say, oh, your lid should be tucking underneath the upper, the bottom lid should tuck underneath the upper lid. What they would be experiencing is that it doesn't quite look right and they wouldn't know why. So the first thing we want to um, make sure we do is uh, draw that bottom lid tucking up underneath the upper lid. The other thing is that uh, they are not perfect, the, the eye opening is not a perfect ellipse. It's more like a trapezoid and we can almost see that better if we turn this upside down where this shape is, comes rather on a regular arc here, and then it turns sharply and goes down. And then this is, if you can see this, it doesn't match that shape. It has more of its sharp curve over here. So when we begin to draw it, we want to do an, follow that, trapezoidal look so that the this severe curve is on this side and this more severe curve is on this side. Now the bottom opening is a little bit more rounded and we're exaggerating this a little bit as well but it tucks up under there. And then there is, um, as we see here, we can see on this drawing, and we can also see on this model, it's a plaster cast, there is a thickness to the uh, both lids, and it's not real prominent, but it is just the slightest area there, and then a little bit up there, and the one on top is usually in shadow, the one on the bottom will catch a little bit of light right here as it protrudes out and then we'll go into shadow here. 
And then this is very critical. The eye, the iris that we see is cut off at the top and just, just about touches the bottom lid. So if we, if we were to draw this eye, um, showing the whole iris like this, floating in the white of the eye, um, it would have the, the drawing, the person that is being drawn would look like they're surprised or shocked all the time. It's just not the way the eye uh, looks. Um, and is constructed inside the socket there. Um, and the other uh, one, another, let's see, we'll put the lid in up here, which comes along here, and then there's a shadow here as it tucks into the head and top of the um, eyebrow up there. But this part will be in deep shadow. And the white of the eye confusing to call it that because it's really not white. It is, it has some tone, either in color it'll be a bluish or grayish or a combination, and it will be a little darker in the corners because this is a round object. So right in there, to give it its spherical look, it will be darker. And then The iris and the pupil, as we see here, and that's what this is indicating, will have a highlight because the eye is wet and round. So there will usually be some kind of very sharp highlight there and a little bit of reflection opposite it. That's just the way the light hits it. So opposite this highlight, be slightly light, and then get darker as it goes around. Sometimes that highlight breaks into the pupil. It just depends upon how the person's head is turned and what kind of lighting there is. And then so I'm going to um, just color this in a little bit more, leave it lighter down here opposite this highlight, come back up. And because the lid comes out over the eyeball, there will be a shadow, just it's another shelf. So there will be a shadow. You can see it here across the eye there. And one of the most important things that makes, gives an eye life is to not have very sharp edges here because we don't see it that way. It's actually quite soft. So usually I'll draw it accurately and then I go in and just break into that and soften those edges. Deepen the pupil here, maybe see partial breaks. And then this lid here, there is, is some shadow as the lid comes over the top and the brow is hanging out over it. And again, this is a very quick drawing. I could go carefully and this one I did earlier. But um, the uh, softening of these edges and getting those highlights in there is what gives life to the eye. So it's important to get the structure right, but the detail of these lines is not as important. As a matter of fact, leaving them out is kind of what gives life to the eye.